A slave that cannot rebel does not deserve pity. What occurs if an African leader cannot be controlled by the West? What they do is pit the African leader they despise against another, usually the one they buy outright. To place the blame on the leader they are unable to purchase, they feed the puppet leader. By assigning unjustified blame, they hope to demonstrate to the world that the leader who refused to submit to the West was bad for Africa. However, reality cannot be concealed. Burkina Faso's leader demonstrated the country's innocence and informed the world the truth after Ghana's president accused the country of terrorism. However, why did the president of Ghana sell himself to the West? Let's investigate. During the US-Africa summit, Nana Akufo-Addo, the president of Ghana, claimed that Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group had formed an alliance with the military government of Burkina Faso. According to Akufo Addo, these mercenaries were hired to fight rebellion inside the boundaries of Burkina Faso. When he asserted that part of the southern region of Burkina Faso had been given to Russia in exchange for their services, the situation became much more serious. Following these serious accusations, Burkina Faso's military chief, Ibrahim Troure, strongly denied them and diplomatic tensions between Burkina Faso and Ghana escalated. The military chief of Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Troure, recently gave a firm rejection in response to these charges. He denied the allegations and highlighted their falsity, presenting them as false. Troure's robust response demonstrates his unshakable commitment to protecting Burkina Faso's reputation from what he considers baseless accusations. How does the global community fare? What are their thoughts on it? The situation between Ghana and Burkina Faso is being keenly watched by the international world. There is a lot of worry and conjecture about the claims of a connection to Russian mercenaries. Numerous countries and international organizations have voiced interest in the issue and demanded a comprehensive inquiry to determine the veracity of the allegations. The scenario has become more complicated because to trial raise strong denial, which has intensified the conspiracies around the matter. In addition to making grave accusations against Burkina Faso, Ghana's president, Akufo Addo, has also offered what he says is proof to back up the assertions. President Akufo Addo has alluded to the involvement of intelligence reports and testimonies suggesting a connection even if the precise contents of the evidence have not been made public between Russian mercenaries and Burkina Faso. Critics have questioned whether this material offers a strong foundation for the accusations, casting doubt on its nature and reliability. In order to evaluate the evidence's veracity and applicability to the charges against Burkina Faso, the international community is awaiting additional clarity and a more thorough presentation of the data. What response has Russia given to all of this? Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's proceed. Russia is unavoidably in the international spotlight as a result of the claims that Burkina Faso has ties to Russian mercenaries. Russia has distanced itself from the charges made by Ghana's president and unequivocally rejected any participation in the matter. An official statement has been released by the Russian government, expressing its shock and dismay at the accusations, calling them unfounded and devoid of any supporting evidence. Russia has demanded a fair and unbiased inquiry, stressing the significance of drawing conclusions only after considering hard data. Ghana's relations with other African countries have been impacted by the accusations against Burkina Faso and its military leader, Ibrahim Troure. Some of Ghana's neighbors have voiced their concern over the accusations and called for a peaceful resolution as well as a thorough investigation to ascertain the truth. Other African countries have also been more circumspect in their interactions with Burkina Faso as a result of the circumstances. As nations wait for the probe's conclusions before committing to anything or adopting a definite position on the issue, diplomatic relations may become strained. Ghana's accusations against Burkina Faso have had a major influence on the political scene. 
the public and political elite are debating and discussing President Akufo Addo's choice to publicly accuse Burkina Faso of having ties to Russian mercenaries. While detractors question the timing and motivation of the claims, allies of the president applaud his audacity in tackling national security. Different factions have expressed differing opinions on the veracity of the accusations and the need for a comprehensive inquiry, polarizing the internal political conversation. Burkina Faso has responded to the accusations by taking proactive measures to resolve the matter and lessen possible harm to its image. Burkina Faso has stated that it is willing to fully assist with any international probe that may be launched, notwithstanding Ibrahim Traoré's public denial. Furthermore, representatives from Ghana and other relevant countries have been called by the Burkina Faso administration to hold diplomatic discussions in order to find a solution. Burkina Faso's dedication to resolving the accusations through dialogue and cooperation is emphasized by this diplomatic strategy, which then permits tensions to rise even higher. The claims that Burkina Faso has ties to Russian mercenaries have a big impact on West African regional security. Neighboring nations are now more concerned than ever about possible outside intervention in the internal affairs of the region. West Africa urgently needs peace and security, and the accusations may force regional alliances and organizations to re-evaluate their security plans and collaboration systems. The probe's findings and the diplomatic agreements that follow will probably influence the dynamics of regional security for some time to come. How has the media contributed? The way the public has seen the accusations against Burkina Faso has been significantly influenced by media coverage. Information and viewpoints have been shared thanks to the local and international media's thorough reporting and analysis. The tone and phrasing of news reports have affected public sentiment, with some sites stressing the importance of a comprehensive inquiry and others speculating on the claim's possible geopolitical ramifications. The need of appropriate reporting during diplomatic tensions and periods of international scrutiny is highlighted by the media's influence on public opinion. However, what accusations did Ghana's president make about Burkina Faso's ties to Russian mercenaries that set Burkina Faso off? Ghana's president, Nana Akufo Addo, said during the US African Leaders Summit that Burkina Faso's military government had hired Russian soldiers from the Wagner Group. He asserts that these mercenaries were recruited to help fight rebellion inside Burkina Faso's boundaries. Akufo Addo went on to claim that Russia had been given a piece of Burkina Faso's southern land in exchange for their services. The diplomatic conflict between Burkina Faso and Ghana was based on these particular charges, which Burkina Faso's military chief, Ibrahim Troure, strongly denied. Ibrahim Troure, the military chief of Burkina Faso, has strongly denied the accusations made by the president of Ghana. In a news conference, Troure flatly denied any connection to the Wagner Group's Russian mercenaries. He questioned the veracity of Ghana's findings, highlighting Burkina Faso's continued commitment to managing its internal security issues independently of outside military assistance. Furthermore, Trial Ray questioned the timing and intent of President Akufo Addo's charges. He claimed that the accusations might have political motivations to damage Burkina Faso's reputation abroad. Burkina Faso's counterarguments underscore the intricacies of the diplomatic conflict and the divergent viewpoints regarding the character of their relationship with Russia. Has Wagner Group addressed the charges in any way? The Wagner Group, the purported Russian mercenary group involved in the charges, has also responded to the assertions made by the president of Ghana. The group said they have not been hired or contracted by the Burkina Faso military government and emphatically rejected any role in the country's internal affairs. The Wagner Group claimed that they do not participate in actions that infringe against national sovereignty and that they are surprised to be drawn into the diplomatic controversy. The problem becomes even more complicated as a result of this denial, because it calls into question the veracity of the accusations made against Burkina Faso and the Wagner Group, as well as the integrity of the evidence Ghana provided. 
The declaration demonstrates that the Wagner Group did nothing and all the evidence was examined. This suggests that the president of Ghana is solely placing the blame on Burkina Faso. Why would he be doing it though? Keep watching the entire video because we will discuss that in the end. To improve our knowledge, we must first address a few more issues. How have other African countries reacted to the accusations? And how have regional alliances influenced their stances? Other African countries have responded differently to the accusations against Burkina Faso, which reflects regional alliances and diplomatic considerations. Some nations have shown support for Ghana, highlighting the importance of conducting a comprehensive inquiry to determine the truth. These countries contend that in order to maintain regional stability, any outside intervention in a sovereign state's domestic affairs must be carefully considered. Other African countries, on the other hand, have adopted a more measured stance, urging a diplomatic solution rather than making snap decisions. These countries' stances may be influenced by regional alliances established through institutions like the African Union, with their reactions being guided by concerns for regional stability and diplomatic harmony. What are the opinions of other significant countries on this issue? Both countries have reacted cautiously to prevent further escalation of the diplomatic conflict after Ibrahim Traoré mentioned cooperation with China and Turkey. China and Turkey have stressed the need for a fair and unbiased examination into the claims, even as they acknowledge their cooperation with Burkina Faso in the war against terrorism. China's and Turkey's comments show a dedication to diplomatic standards and the necessity of an open resolution. These countries maintain a balanced position that promotes communication while guaranteeing the maintenance of their international reputations by not categorically rejecting or verifying the partnerships that Troy suggested. Burkina Faso's relationships with other countries in the West African region are impacted by its alliances with China and Turkey. Some nations that prioritize counter-terrorism and regional stability see the cooperation in the fight against terrorism favorably. Burkina Faso's interactions with China and Turkey support larger regional and international security goals, especially in the battle against terrorism. Partnerships with these countries demonstrate a dedication to using international collaboration to address common security issues. The consequences for counter-terrorism efforts entail possible intelligence sharing, expertise sharing, and cooperative measures to combat extremist threats. The present diplomatic dispute, however, would make cooperative cooperation more difficult, requiring cautious maneuvering to avoid jeopardizing larger security goals. Let's go back to the original question. Why is Ghana's president giving false reports against Burkina Faso? The response to this intricate question relates to a story that implies many people view the president as a puppet under Western control. The claim gets traction since it is backed up by evidence from a number of specialists. The West's purported influence over Ghana's president raises serious questions regarding the leader's independence and capacity for making decisions. This claim suggests that the president's words and deeds may not always represent the true desires and goals of the Ghanaian people, but rather further the objectives of outside parties. This story is supported by the president's alleged statement made during the US African Leaders Summit. A layer of suspicion is added by this setting, which raises the possibility of US influence. It is unclear if the president's remarks were the consequence of outside pressure, or if such a declaration was the result of hidden agendas. Analyzing American Dynamics The African Leaders Summit sheds light on the possible impact on the presidency of Ghana. The summit brings together African leaders in a diplomatic setting to discuss a range of topics, such as political stability, regional security, and economic cooperation. But it also gives outside forces, like the US, the ability to sway the member countries. The question arises, did the summit's dynamics force the president to make remarks that reflected Western interests? As leaders strive for a balance between their country's interests and those of the outside world, the influence that is exerted in such diplomatic settings is a topic of discussion. 
The idea that Ghana's president is a puppet in this situation suggests that the country is susceptible to outside influences that could jeopardize its sovereignty. Additionally, another level of complexity is introduced by the president's remarks at the U.S. African Leaders Summit. The claim that the leader of Burkina Faso is purposefully presented in a negative light on the global scene begs the question of motivation. Why would outside parties want to damage Burkina Faso's leader's reputation, especially the West? The leader of Burkina Faso defies convention by putting African interests ahead of Western norms. The West is said to have disliked this defiance and tried to persuade Ghana's president to place the blame on Burkina Faso. What particular acts or policies of the leader of Burkina Faso have contributed to this alleged hostility from the West, one might wonder. Examining the leader's track record regarding policies, decisions, and diplomatic stances becomes crucial in understanding the roots of this alleged discord. Identifying concrete instances where Burkina Faso's leader opposed Western interests provides a basis for evaluating the claim's credibility. He has made many policies and decisions that showed the West its limits. Let's move on to the fundamental query. In international relations, the responsibility of leaders, especially presidents, is immense. Accusations of terrorism against a nation carry significant weight and can have far-reaching consequences. The recent incident involving the president of Ghana accusing Burkina Faso of terrorism, without substantial evidence, has sparked a debate on the professionalism and ethical considerations of such statements. The controversy began when Ghana's president made a public statement accusing Burkina Faso of engaging in terrorist activities. The statement, made under apparent pressure from Western nations, raises concerns about the credibility and professionalism of such accusations. Accusing a nation of terrorism without concrete evidence damages diplomatic relations and puts the accused country in a precarious position internationally. Diplomacy is built on trust, respect, and adherence to international norms. Accusations of terrorism are serious charges that can have severe repercussions for a nation's reputation and security. Without solid evidence, such accusations strain diplomatic ties and erode the trust that nations place in each other. Leaders must exercise caution and responsibility when making public statements affecting global relations. The influence of Western nations on the actions of leaders in other parts of the world has been a recurring theme in international relations. In the case of Ghana, the accusations against Burkina Faso seem to be driven by external pressure. Leaders must navigate the delicate balance between international alliances and the need for independent decision-making. Succumbing to external pressure without sufficient evidence undermines a leader's credibility and the principles of fair and just governance. Burkina Faso's leader responded to the accusations with a strong stance, asserting the importance of truth and warning Ghana against making baseless allegations in the future. This response reflects the gravity of the situation and the need for leaders to uphold the principles of honesty and integrity in international discourse. Burkina Faso's leader emphasized the importance of evidence in diplomatic relations, highlighting the necessity of a careful and measured approach to such sensitive matters. Accusing a nation of terrorism without evidence has severe consequences that extend beyond diplomatic tensions. In extreme cases, it can lead to economic sanctions, isolation, and military intervention. The international community must be cautious about accepting unverified claims, as the repercussions can be dire. Leaders are responsible for ensuring their statements are grounded in truth and supported by credible evidence to avoid destabilizing global relations. Leadership comes with the obligation to act responsibly and ethically, especially in matters of international significance. Accusations of terrorism should not be made lightly, and leaders must prioritize truth and evidence over political expediency. Responsible leadership entails considering the potential impact of statements on both national and international levels, and making decisions based on sound judgment rather than succumbing to external pressures. In the era of global interconnectedness, 
one nation's actions can have widespread implications. Accusations of terrorism without evidence not only harm bilateral relations, but also contribute to a broader atmosphere of mistrust and uncertainty. The international community, including organizations like the United Nations, should hold leaders accountable for baseless accusations, promote transparency, and foster a culture of evidence-based diplomacy. Accusations of terrorism should be channeled through established diplomatic channels, allowing for a thorough investigation and presenting evidence fairly and transparently. Leaders must resist the temptation to use such serious allegations as a tool for political actions or succumb to external pressures that compromise the principles of diplomatic professionalism. The recent exchange between Burkina Faso and Ghana leaders has brought to light the complexities of international relations. Burkina Faso's leaders' assertive response to Ghana's accusations underscores the importance of mutual respect and the refusal to tolerate baseless allegations. Burkina Faso's leaders' response to Ghana's accusations can be seen as a shut-up call, signaling a firm rejection of any unwarranted claims against his nation. This stance highlights a leader's commitment to protecting the reputation and sovereignty of their country, setting a precedent for other nations to follow. But Kina Faso's leader emphasizes that countries, regardless of their size or global influence, should not tolerate baseless accusations that can harm their standing on the international stage. The assertive response from Burkina Faso reflects a broader sentiment of upholding sovereignty and independence in international affairs. Nations, particularly those historically influenced by Western powers, increasingly assert their autonomy. Burkina Faso's leader's message is a reminder that every nation has the right to defend its integrity and resist unfounded allegations, regardless of external pressures. In the case of Ghana, the accusations against Burkina Faso are influenced by external pressure. Burkina Faso's leader's response challenges the idea that nations should unquestioningly follow the directives of Western powers and underscores the importance of making decisions based on their people's best interests. The exchange between Burkina Faso and Ghana emphasizes the need for mutual respect in international relations. Accusations without evidence strain, diplomatic ties and erode the foundation of trust between nations. Burkina Faso's leader's firm stance calls for all nations, particularly those under Western influence, to recognize and respect every country's autonomy, dignity, and sovereignty. Burkina Faso's response has broader implications for global relations, urging a reconsideration of the dynamics between powerful nations and their smaller counterparts. The incident prompts a reflection on the responsibility of influential nations to approach international relations with sensitivity, acknowledging the diverse perspectives and realities of countries across the globe. Diplomacy plays a crucial role in resolving disputes and fostering understanding between nations. Burkina Faso's leader's response highlights the importance of diplomatic channels in addressing grievances and clarifying misunderstandings. Rather than resorting to public accusations, leaders should engage in constructive dialogue, allowing for a more nuanced and collaborative approach to problem solving. Do you think the West is controlling these nations? Why are African leaders not supporting other leaders who stand against the West? Is it okay to sell yourself for a few dollars? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.